What happened to this teenage boy walking through this school gym? He's captured here on surveillance camera, then disappears until... Come to Lowndes High School now. There's a dead, dead body out here. Seventeen-year-old Kendrick Johnson was found upside down in a rolled gym mat last January. Investigators say he was reaching for a shoe, got stuck, and died. We have found nothing to indicate this was anything other than just a tragic accident. You could tell he was beaten. Kendrick's parents believe the story about the shoe is a cover-up, and they question why sheriff's investigators either did not collect or test potential evidence from the scene. Got some questions about the Kendrick Johnson case. I'm not going to discuss that with you. Why not, sir? Because our case is closed. Kendrick's body was exhumed. His parents paid for an independent autopsy, and the pathologist found evidence of apparent non-accidental blunt force trauma to the neck. But it's also what the pathologist did not find that shocked the family. Organs, the heart, lungs, liver, etc., were not with the body. What was in the place of the organs? Newspaper. After months of protests and demands for answers, an announcement by the U.S. Department of Justice. I am of the opinion that a sufficient basis exists for my office to conduct a formal review of the facts and investigation surrounding the death of Kendrick Johnson. No matter who you are, how much money your parents have, the color of your skin, everyone deserves justice. Everyone. Well, Victor Blackwell joins me now from Atlanta. So Kendrick Johnson's family exhumed their son's body, trying to get some answers about his death, only to learn his organs were missing. I don't understand how the state investigation doesn't offer any explanations. I mean, somebody removed this young man's organs. Somebody's lying. Well, they said that there was an investigation. You'll remember that we reported on this show back in early October that when Kendrick Johnson's body was exhumed for that second autopsy, his organs were not with the body. And that started this uh, investigation three months ago. And I want to remind people which each side says. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation, which did the first autopsy, says they put the organs back into Kendrick Johnson's body, closed the body, sent it to Harrington Funeral Home. The funeral home says the organs never came with the body, but they take it a step further. Further, the funeral home says that GBI, Georgia Bureau of Investigation, discarded the organs because they were destroyed through some natural process that Harrington still has not explained. But late today, we uh, now have a copy of this letter that was sent to the Johnsons. It's from the Funeral Services Board. Only CNN has it. And I want to read uh, just the line in the conclusion here. The board has exhausted all available investigative avenues at its disposal, and no determination could be made whether the organs were transferred to the funeral establishment with the body. There was this three-month investigation, which by law is secret and behind closed doors. They just, at the end of the investigation, come out with what the decision is, and in this case, no action. Well, I mean, the body was also stuffed with newspapers. So, I mean, again, somebody's lying. Either somebody who did the original autopsy uh, didn't include the organs in the body, or if someone at the funeral home did something with the organs and stuffed it with newspaper. I mean, somebody's not telling the truth. Well, the funeral home here has never denied stuffing the body with newspaper, although we spoke with leaders of the industry at, at Mortuary Sciences, and they say either it's something they've never heard of or it's something that's not in line with standard practices. Now, the, the manager and the owner of Harrington Funeral Home, uh, Antonio Harrington, would not speak with us on camera, but he allowed his attorney, Roy Copeland, to speak with us. And in the defense of the funeral home stuffing the cavity with newspaper, he cited a 25-year-old guide for embalming in which it suggests that when when the organs are absent, you use sawdust or cotton. Now, that's a 25-year-old version. A more recent version got rid of sawdust. But here's my exchange uh, in the month since this has come to light uh, with that attorney, Roy Copeland. Watch. I'm told we don't have that exchange. So, uh, w w l yeah, let me tell you what he said, though, because I have it here. Uh, again, the book says either cotton or sawdust, and I highlight that newspaper is not one of them. He says it's absolutely not one of them, nor is it precluded as one type of foreign substance that may be introduced into a body for purposes of building up for display. Essentially, it doesn't say we can't use newspaper. And that's what the state says. It's not best practices, but it's not a violation. Again, with the newspaper, no action from the state. So, again, at, at the end of this investigation, in, in addition to his family not knowing how he died or, or why, he was, why he died, uh, they just got to accept the fact that somebody took out his organs and did away with them, even though they maybe had some relevance to the cause of death, and they're not going to get any more answers on that. 
Well, you know, we spoke with several uh, members, uh, former members of the FBI, and asked, well, is it possible that there could be a third autopsy? You've got the competing ones from the state and the independent pathologist. Would the FBI want their own? It was possible. But now, without the lungs, that would have actually showed some evidence of positional asphyxia, which was the diagnosis from the state, or the tissue from the jaw, which was the diagnosis of blunt force trauma to the neck from the independent pathologist. It's no point in exhuming his body for a, a second time for that third autopsy. They'll have to rely on the reports and the photographs and mm -hmm. the slides from uh, those two pathologists.